good, terrible, bad, but like enjoyable hot trash. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, 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 no. No, <laughs> no. I feel like it's the kind of book you've got to take what is useful to you and you've got to leave what is bullshit. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna read Kylie Jenner's favourite books. <laughs> you may be asking Megan, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I just wanted to try on Twitter. I am kind of asking myself that question. The Kardashians and the Jenners are like, without a doubt, some of the most influential celebrities out there. And so I feel like them saying, this is my favorite book, is gonna influence so many people to read that book. So I wanna see, are they influencing the masses well? Don't read anything. If you don't read it, it can't harm you. And I've had this video idea since last summer when like during the pandemic, at the start of the pandemic, when everyone was shut indoors, Kylie kept giving book recommendations on her Instagram and I was like, what is this? Like, Kylie, we started reading, what? And we're just gonna put these books to the test and see if I agree with her taste. So basically, two of these are ones that she recommended during the pandemic. The first is Only Love Is Real by Dr. Brian Weiss. Um, I don't know much about this. I think it's about a psychiatrist and two soulmates that he, they're both his patients. And Kylie like recommended the shit out of this book. She recommended it multiple times. I'll put, I'll show you the receipts because I have them. I screenshot everything. People asked her like, what's your favorite book? She said this book. She posted like pictures of herself reading it and be like, if you need to read any book, read this book. So this is like the piece de resistance, according to Kylie. This is like the best book on earth. So let's see. <laughs> It isn't like my kind of book, like this spiritual nonfiction, but we're gonna give it a go. And then in one of the same pictures that she posted that, she also posted a book which is on my TBR. So this is something I wanted to test, right? This is a book that I used to wanna read because it's like something that Yoga with Adrian, for example, recommends, who I love, my queen. And so I thought it'd be a good test because it's a book I was already interested in. And it's The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This is like a personal growth, self-help book, but I don't think it's as spiritual as this. I think this is like super spiritual and this is like a little bit spiritual. We're gonna be reading a lot more like self-helpy stuff than I ever have, but maybe that is the key to success. Maybe the reason Kylie is a, is she a billionaire? Do we know? Is that it like, has that been debunked? Maybe the reason why is because she reads books like this. What I'm hoping will happen when I read these books, LMAO. Did you, did you get the guy? Did you get the job? Is your house any bigger? Did, did money just magically, you know, get put in your pocket? And then <laughs> I consulted the archives. I found the receipts. Basically, if you don't know, Kylie Jenner wrote a book. I have a whole reading vlog where I read Kendall and Kylie Jenner's book. It was a mess, but whatever. And one day, this is like 2014, I think, when she was doing promo for it, someone asked, what is your favorite book? And she said, Twilight, I, I've read that. And then she also said, Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> now, I never thought I would read Pretty Little Liars. I've never even watched the show. Like, I have no reference for this. Like, I have never watched it. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna love it because I think to enjoy this, you had to read it like back in the day. And if you're gonna reread it, you're gonna rate a high for the nostalgia factor. But I have no nostalgia factor for this. So I just, I don't think I'm gonna love it. I'm not holding out hopes. But in the same time, I'm kind of like, hmm, I'm kind of excited to experience this. So these are the books that we're gonna be reading, recommended by Miss Kylie Jenner. I am gonna start with her favorite one. Only Love Is Real. This is like Kylie's number one recommendation. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this and I'll let you know what I think of it. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah. You ahead. should be. Right, so I have an ear infection. <laughs> Sexy, I know. So I didn't want to film. I didn't want to film. I don't want to talk right now. I'm in a lot of pain. But I have to model Kylie's girl boss energy. She's like, you know, a bastion <laughs> built myself on the ground up girl boss energy and she would not take a moment off, I don't think. Well, she would, she would, but she wouldn't want you to know that she was taking a moment off because of an infection. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna continue. We're gonna persevere. Now I have a theory. I have a theory. Because last time I did a Kardashian Jenner related video was when I read Red Bull's City of Indra, Kylie and Kendall Jenner's book. 
And I got so ill. Like that was the last time I was really ill was <laughs> when I filmed that video. I had the cough. I'm like half convinced I had COVID, but that's another story. It's a Kardashian curse. It's a Kardashian curse. If you wrong them, if you make fun of them, you're gonna be cursed like me. Why are two of the times I felt most unwell are when I'm doing a Kardashian Jenner video? It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. So the Kardashian curse is real and I'm living proof of it. But anyway, I am halfway through Only Love Is Real and you guys. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm not enjoying it. Basically, it is told from this psychiatrist. He's this like famous psychiatrist who apparently is an expert in past life therapy. So like you go to him and he'll let you go back into all your past lives that you lived in and like learn lessons from them and learn how your like ailments that like you suffer with now are because of your past lives. Okay, whether you believe in rebirth or not, like the idea that this guy can like get you to vividly remember <laughs> your past lives, like, okay, okay, sir, okay. Basically this one in particular is about, cause he has loads of books. This one is about soulmates reunited. So like apparently in our lives, we have souls that we are constantly, you know, with in our lives. And this is about like soulmates from past lives finding each other. I genuinely, I cannot imagine Kylie Jenner reading this book. I can't imagine her sitting out in her million dollar home and like lounging in the sun and reading this book, which is what she posted all the pictures of. I cannot imagine it. I cannot imagine her like enjoying this. Like it's so like super duper spiritual. And like maybe I need to get outside and go sit in my garden. I don't have a million pound house. Don't have a pool, don't have a sun lounger. Maybe that's where we're going wrong. Maybe I can't get into this book because I'm not living the life of Kylie Jenner. If I could, I would. Like fly out, knock on a home, say, Kylie, I need to read this book in, in your garden. Just, just leave me there. Like I'll go on the sun lounger, you know, you can ignore me, but not happening. It reminds me a lot of The Untethered Soul, which I read a while ago, where it's just like too like, this is the secret of life. This is the secret of the world. This is what, life means i'm like girl i know it no 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 that's a lie <laughs> at one point he was saying how the guy his like chronic neck and back pain that he'd been having for like so many years was because of a mortal sword wound he took through the neck in like i don't know 500 ad so that's what we're talking about here it's very strange <laughs> uh, there was one page where i read it and i was like huh okay i can see that i think it was about like living life in the present and like nurturing your soul first and and then your body but like them working in tandem and not being too harsh on your body and yourself that i was like okay we can we can vibe we can vibe but the rest is a struggle it's gonna take me like four hours to read the next 80 pages i can tell you it right now like i was like this will take me like an hour to read that is not the case <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 no, 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 no. So, uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna give it one star. I'm gonna give it one star. It just wasn't for me. Listen, I went and I looked on Goodreads. The girlies love it. Like, it's got like a four point something on Goodreads. But I think if you're like gonna be picking this up, you're already gonna be the kind of person who's gonna engage with it. Like the whole reincarnation thing, the whole spiritualism. And it just wasn't for me, personally. It just wasn't for me. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I could just never get past the fact that this was like, fiction like i could never imagine this being real like what he was talking about like with the patients i don't know why kylie jones so into this book i suppose it's maybe a bit like la motivational i'm that bitch like my life is ordained to be as it is you know whatever but miss kylie i'm sorry i didn't vibe now listen this is not just like something she's posted on her story like the four agreements she twice said you gotta read this book so like this is like kylie's bible <laughs> and i just can't imagine like her vibing with this it just seems so like outdated to me and like interesting it wasn't it was yeah 
Yeah. I also just thought the guy couldn't write. I'm sorry. Like, listen, this may be true and he may be a great psychiatrist. I don't know. I can't really comment. But the guy couldn't write. Like, he needed a co-author for this shit. Like, he was rambling. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm kind of ashamed, but I gotta be honest with you. I fell asleep reading this. I fell asleep in the middle of the day. At like three o'clock. It was that boring, I fell asleep. N very rarely has a book ever made me fall asleep. <laughs> I, it was, you guys, it was the most boring shit. And the whole, ugh, the whole thing is about these people supposedly being soulmates and like finding each other in their other lives. But like literally, I'm gonna spoil it in case you don't care. But they literally like, it's on page maybe 160 out of 170 that they meet and realize that they're soulmates. And then we didn't get any of the after. And like, you've just spent the whole book talking about them in isolation. It's just not interesting. Like talking about their individual past lives and i wanted more of them like finding each other and like and maybe remembering each other in their past lives or like anecdotes he heard afterwards because sure they weren't like they kind of met and then they weren't his patients anymore if this is all to be believed i was just like well it's just not satisfying to read is it no right now life couldn't get any worse <laughs> You guys wouldn't recommend it i didn't think any of you were coming to this book for recommendations but like it was so boring. Now, I'm actually excited to read Pretty Little Liars because it's gonna be like fun and campy and shit, but it's gonna be like fun shit. You know what I mean? Not like boring shit. It's gonna be like exciting shit. I never thought I'd be reading Pretty Little Liars. I thought I'd miss that train. Like I thought that train had come and passed me by, but apparently we are. I'm gonna like spoil the book for everyone. I hope you don't care. Like it's been out for a long time. I think if you cared about the story of Pretty Little Liars at all, you would have read the book or watched the TV show by now. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm not ready, you guys. <laughs> I'm halfway through Pretty Little Liars and it's like terrible, it, it's awful. Like it's really bad, but I am enjoying reading it. I don't think so, I don't think I'm allowed. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I'm not allowed. I know I'm not allowed. I feel like it's just like hot trash. It's just like good, terrible, bad, but like enjoyable hot trash. <laughs> Listen, it's like problematic as fuck. It's, ve it's very bad in that regard. Like it's written in 2006, so it's got that like skinny girl culture, like, you know, eating disorders, you know, are fine, glamorized, whatever. One's trying to sleep with her teacher. I I'm sure you all know this if you watch Pretty Little Liars, but I haven't. So basically, if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't know the story of Pretty Little Liars, which like probably you all do, Alison, she goes missing when they're in like seventh or eighth grade. And all these girlies, these girlies have secrets. These girlies have secrets. <laughs> and Alison like knew them all. She was like, she was like the popular one. So she like had all the other girls on a string. She goes missing, presumed dead. And then they're in like 11th grade now and they've started getting letters about their secrets signed A. Now I'm pretty sure Alison isn't A. I think that would be like maybe the reveal at the end of this book. There's seven books. <laughs> That is not correct. Not saying I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the series because it's terrible, but like I don't want a man that's <laughs> So they all think Alison is like back to like tell my secrets. I think one of like the also this is problematic, one of like the dark secrets is one of them is a lesbian. Like I think that's her dark, deep secret. The other ones are like I'm guessing maybe murder or some shit, but that's on the same level as being a lesbian. <laughs> this is terrible, but it's fun. Like I, it takes me back to when I would go to the library as a kid, cause I like got all, I read all my books from the library and I would pick up shitty YA. I can remember the little YA section in the library. It was just a cart, like one double-sided, stack of shelves that are like shorter than me you know like three levels maybe and it was all just shitty YA on there and this is like what I was reading like I didn't read this obviously though I did read like a lot of contemporaries as well but I've forgotten them but like this kind of high school bitchy YA contemporary was my shit and I'm not ashamed of that fact and I am kind of enjoying being back in this world <laughs> I don't know if I would say that this is badly written for its time because I feel like it's just it's quite 
like paced quite well. Like the girls like bad were bad girls and it's just kind of fun to read i'm kind of like vibing with it as someone who's never read the show so i'm gonna go finish it you guys it's actually carly maybe on something i would never have read this but i feel like i am absorbing a key moment in book pop culture history when reading it hi fancy seeing you here <laughs> okay so i finished pretty little liars and it was terrible, like it was so bad. It was awful, but I enjoyed reading it enough that I'm gonna give it three stars. This is disgusting. I like it though. Listen, this is like problematic as fuck. Like it wouldn't be published today, but it was like a quick shitty bad read. And I kind of, en I enjoyed the experience of it. What can I say? I enjoyed, I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself. The thing is these kind of like YA series, I was wrong. There's not seven books, there's like 14 or something. These kind of books, they're like not books on their own. These kind of like YA series that we had back in the day. Like you're supposed to kind of go and get like the first four out of the library and then like just speed through them all because this is like the first third of a book really like stretched out. Not much happens. Like it's not really its own book. I'm not going to carry on with the series. I don't think I like enjoyed it that much to like want to read on. But I am glad that Kylie liked this because it's finally got me to like know the Pretty Little Liars world a little bit like it was a part of pop culture I had just missed out on but I feel like I get it now like it's trash but it's kind of like fun trash I couldn't stop reading it do you know what I mean like just shit was happening shit was hitting the walls like it was like crazy and it was awful it was like terribly done you know hot trash but I kind of like enjoyed the experience a little bit. Like I wouldn't sit here and recommend to you that you read this, but I also think it was kind of like the OG YA mystery in a way. Like maybe not OG, but it was like one of the early ones. Like I feel like we have to recognize that this paved the way for some like YA mysteries that I really enjoy now. So we have to give a bit of kudos for that. I have to recognize the effect that this has had on society and on history, basically. Now I'm gonna go and read our last book of this video, which is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And like I said at the start of this video, this is like the only one of the books that I actually wanted to read beforehand. Like I was actually interested in reading this book. It was on my want to read. So I'm hoping it may be like the most successful in the video. It's like tiny, it won't take me long to read at all. So yeah, let's go do it. So I've read the first two agreements, which are like these life lessons, right? I don't have like full thoughts on it yet. I don't think, I don't think I'm, cause it's so short. Like I feel like I won't be able to tell you much until like right at the end. But I feel like it's the kind of book you've got to take what is useful to you and you've got to leave what is bullshit to you, you know, personally. The first two agreements or lessons in this are be impeccable with your word, which basically means like don't act uh, in anger and, and say things to hurt others. And number two is don't take anything personally. So it's like, if someone says something mean to you, that says more about them than it does you. Which are like kind of universal ideas, but it is good, I think, to hear them again. Um, so I've enjoyed like that aspect It's definitely, I think, I think it's good to maybe read stuff or consume stuff like this occasionally, because it does remind you of those kind of values. But... <laughs> There is some stuff in this that I like don't agree with and like I'm like when I'm reading it. Tone it down. Bitch. One example is in that take uh, be impeccable with your word thing. It said how if someone gave an example, if someone says to another you have the kind of colour of a person who's going to get cancer and the other person believes it, in a year they'll have cancer. And like that just doesn't, like I don't know, I don't think it was a metaphor either, like I think it was saying it legit. And like I just, I that's where I draw the line. 
I'm enjoying elements of it. I think it's the kind of thing that is helpful to read, even if, like I said, take the parts that are useful to you and leave the parts that aren't. So I'm going to finish it tonight. Obviously, it's not long at all, but it's just like, okay, you know? I think it's a useful thing to read, but I'm not blown away. So I'm going to give it two stars. Here's the thing. I agree with like everything that this book is saying, pretty much. It's ideas of living in the moment, you know, treating yourself and others kindly, putting your best into everything, but recognizing your best is gonna be different every day. All of those things are things like I agree with and I think it's important to remind ourselves of. However, the way this was written wasn't for me. <laughs> This is not for me. No. It may be for some people, but I felt like there was just a lot of this language that was kind of masking what it was actually saying. You know, it'd speak of like the judge, the victim, the parasite. And I was like, let's just talk about this in layman's terms. <laughs> I just feel like it would be a lot more accessible to like a lot of people if it was spoken about in that way. I don't know. I just feel like some of this like spiritual stuff that is told in this kind of way, I feel like is supposed to sound really clever and like groundbreaking when really it's just like core human values that we should remind ourselves of and like try to implement in our lives. But like the way it's told is too much, too much for me. This video <laughs> wasn't a success, but I'm glad that I did it because who knew? Who knew that Pretty Little Liars would be the standout in this video? Who could have predicted that at the start of this video? Not me. I kind of read this as a joke and I gained like a certain level of respect for it because of like it being one of the first kind of like mysteries, YA. And obviously it's shit and like bad, but I enjoyed the reading experience. That was a three star, then we had a two star and then we had a one star. Kylie's favorite book, which I'm still surprised is like her favorite book. I just didn't connect with <laughs> like at all. I don't understand why it's her favorite book, but if Kylie can take something from this, all the power to her, you know what I mean? I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Let me know what celebrities you would like uh, to see me do this with in the future. If there's a Kardashian or Jenna you would like to see me do this with first, um, or whoever, I'm happy to do it forever. This is fun. I love finding out celebrities' favorite books, even if I don't love them. <laughs> I do like the experience of reading them because I think you can learn a lot about a person by reading their favorite books. If you've gotten to the end of this video, comment the, um, there's like a shh emoji, right? I'm not making that up. That, that is correct. Comment the shh emoji for Pretty Little, pretty little Lies. It needs to be slightly uh, off center. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you very, very soon in another video. Bye.